This is Corolla Digital. Hello, my little Salisbury Steaks. It's me, Allison. I'm a little under the weather, and it is making it even harder than normal for me to string words together into coherent sentences. But I'm that kind of under the weather where I don't know if I actually am sick or if I'm just going to get sick or if I'm just a hypochondriac. I don't normally think of myself as one, but I feel less than normal but not so bad that I have to stay home. I hate that feeling. Uh... So, you know, pray for me. Anyway, um, we're going to do fan phone call, and uh, it could be amazing. It could be crappy. Who knows? But first, Gary and I were talking about something that I want him to share with you guys, which is the live bonus episode of my show from L.A. PodFest with Doug Benson and Greg Proops is available on iTunes right now. And some people are saying that they don't use iTunes and can we make it available to them um, some other way. And we are looking into that. However... There is a way that you can still get it if you use Android. Gary knows about it. Take it, Gary. Well, yes, that's sort of true. Although if, you, if you just hate iTunes, we're sorry, but oh, that's the only way to yes. get it. You have to get it through iTunes. Yes. Some people have been asking about buying it directly on their phone through Google Play. For people like that, if you don't completely despise iTunes but you have an Android device, you can buy the uh, – Did I say hate iTunes? I meant hate iPhones. You said <laughs> iTunes, but but in general, there are people out there who just hate iTunes. I, I mean, know. So, so for certain people, that's the case, and I understand that. It can be a frustrating program. Mm. But uh, it, if you don't hate iTunes and you use an Android or something, you can still go into the iTunes store, buy the, uh, buy the Live from LA Podfest episode, and then you can just drag it out of iTunes onto your desktop, and then it just becomes a regular MP3 that you can sync with whatever device you want in whatever way you normally sync stuff. So you can just sync it to your Android that way. I know it's an extra step, and you have to physically go on a computer and connect the device, and I, more than anyone, am impatient with stuff like that, but uh, that's an option for uh, those people who are having a little trouble. Well, that makes me wonder, question to you guys, people who want us to make it available some way other than iTunes, is it that you hate iTunes, or is it that you have an Android? That's the question, right? Or both. Or both. We love iTunes, for the record. We do. And we want people to go to iTunes and comment on our page and leave five stars. That's right. Then you could be in iTunes. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. You're the wind beneath my wings today. You're the gale to my Oprah, I think. (laughs) Um, Yeah, you could be uh, the iTunes comment of the week if you leave a comment. And five stars would be the ideal number. More if more were available. Anyway, I believe it is time for Fan Phone Call. All right. First up, we're going to be calling Alan. Now, the way this works, you send your phone number in to ariynbf at adamcrolla.com, and then at random we choose some numbers. Alan included a little bit of a backstory about what's going on with him, which makes it so that part of me says, oh, this could be interesting. The other part of me says, we're just going to be talking to a creep. So we'll find out which it's going to be. Hello. Hello, is this Alan? Yeah, Matt is calling. Yes, this is Allison Rosen from Allison Rosen's Your New Best Friend. <gasps> oh, my God. That's Allison. the appropriate response. Thank you. I'm so tired of people who are just like, hello. Wow. You're like freaking amazing. I need a headset. I'm driving and I can't be on the phone because I'll get a ticket. Oh, my God. Johnny oh Law is God. standing between us. I'm like freaking blushing here. Wow. I'm such a big fan of yours. Well, don't, wow. I mean, I appreciate that, but don't get a ticket. Do you have a headset or anything? No, I, no, I don't. I, my, my girlfriend's right next to me. We're, we're headed to Smarter Final. We love that place. <laughs> it's a, it's a great place. What are you shopping for today? Oh, we're going to get a Tang. We love Tang. Tang? It was good for the freaking, uh, astronaut. It's good enough for us. That's right. Well, Alan, I wanted to talk to you about the fact that you've slept with upwards of 500 women and the hall pass thing, but I guess we're out of time. Yes, I know. Oh, man. Um, What a bummer. You you want to talk to my girlfriend? Sure. Okay. Hold on. Okay. She wants to talk about the hall pass. Can I talk to her about the hall pass? I'm all the women I've slept with. Hi, Allison. Hello. Hi, Alan's girlfriend. What's your name? Liz. So... 
Alan filled us in on the fact that he's slept with upwards of 500 women and you haven't been with that many men and you gave him a hall pass. He used pass. to be a man whore. Yeah, a yeah I can hear him saying I, a big slut in the I background. Him up. Um, were you worried at all about, you know, settling down with someone who's that much of a um, slut? Man whore? Yeah, man whore. <laughs> um, well... I didn't, I, I, after we started dating more, I started finding out about the exact number of women. Um, I didn't know at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So at first they didn't, you know, bother me. And then once I kind of started to know the exact number of how much of a man he was, um, I kind of, it almost didn't bother me even more because I thought, you know, he used to be such a man whore and, Somehow he was able to give all that up for me. Yeah. And so, and so it doesn't, it it doesn't bother me. I I almost feel um, special. (laughs) Now, why did you give him a hall pass for his, was it his birthday? Or? Um, It was around our five year anniversary. Mm -hmm. What, what made you decide that that would be something to do? Um, well, I think that, you know, every relationship goes through their ups and downs and, you know, we've had a lot of ups and we've had downs and everything. And I just thought maybe if he, you know, go after, after being with so many women and then not being with anybody but me for five years, mm-hmm. um, you know, I thought maybe if he went out there and you know, saw what was out there, then he would come back and realize that he's got it all right here. And is that how it went down? He never went through with the hall pass. Oh. No. He he talked to a few girls over the phone and things like that, but never went through with it because I, I think after he kind of was kind of talking to like a few people and the idea started getting a little real, then I think he he thought, you know, this can go really bad, and he didn't want to risk losing me over it. And so he just decided not to do it. It's not conducive to a healthy relationship. Yeah. What? Alan is in the background saying it's not conducive to a healthy relationship? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she but, said, what? But, but he she told – he. I'm confused, though, because I believe he told us that he did go through with it. He said that she's confused because you told her that you did go through with it. No. No, he did not. Hmm. Well. What? What's he saying? He said it was too much to risk, even though I was okay with it. Oh, that's actually quite romantic. How'd you How'd you guys meet? What What a catch! How'd you guys meet? Um, we actually met online, and on our very first date, I got super sick. We were on our date for like eight hours, so we had already had like our dinner and, you know, everything, Uh, but it was probably like 10 o'clock at night, and we got hungry again, and there was like a Del Taco around the corner, so we said, okay, let's go and, you know, get some Del Taco, and I got food poisoning off of a chicken quesadilla, and I got really sick, and sick everywhere, coming out of every orifice, pretty much. Oh, yes, I know what you mean when you throw up out your butt, (laughs) and a little comes out your nose. And it induced my, you know, monthly feminine time. Oh, wow. As well. No and wonder went, you guys are in love. Yes. And he went to the store and he got me the abysmal Alka-Seltzer, tampons, pads, I mean everything, Aww. cold compresses. He took care of me the whole night, took me to urgent care the next day, was with me for like three days straight. And I just couldn't send him back to the world of man whoring so I kept him and he didn't sleep with any other women while you guys were on your date no that's actually very sweet not the fact that you didn't sleep with other women but the fact they took care of you yes that's that's kind of what made me give him a chance because Mm -hmm. I too was you know not as much as him but I was dating and seeing you know other guys and things like that at the same time that I 
started seeing him, I was seeing somebody else. And um, my friends were like, you know, you just need to find somebody to, you know, you're getting to that age, blah, 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 you know, to settle down with. And, um, you know, when all that happened, he kind of took care of me and, you know, didn't leave my bedside and called in sick to work so he can stay with me. I was just like, okay, like, no normal person, no normal guy does this. Right. You know, so I just thought that there was something special there. And do you think, so I decided to go ahead and give it a chance. Do you think giving, Five years later. Do you think giving him the hall pass was kind of a test? Like, would you have really been okay with, with him if he had done that? If he had gone through with it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, um, if I would have been okay if he had gone through with the hall pass. I, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it was a test or if it was just, yeah. or if it was honestly, you know, I wanted him to see what was out there so that, um, you know, he can realize that what we have is good, you know? Right. All right. And for anyone who wants to find this kind of love, um, what website was it that you guys met on? <laughs> MySpace, so don't go to MySpace. Oh, yeah. Love. <laughs> no, in this day and age, all you'll find is some shitty bands. Um, yeah, exactly. All right. You know what? I'm going to mm-hmm. be honest with you. It was supposed to be a one-night stand and nothing more. That's but, how. That's what you thought of it as initially, mm-hmm. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, we both really just thought it was going to be a one-night stand, and then I got sick and took care of me and then I saw that there was more to him than just a lonely man whore you know (laughs) yes all right well thank you man whores that's what they are they're lonely that's why they're from women to women to women right I know they're looking for something that they're not gonna that they're not gonna find with their penis yes exactly um all right well thank you so much for for telling us the story and uh enjoy smart and final thank you do you want to talk to Alan again well, is he driving still? No, we're parked now. We're parked. Oh, now. yeah. I put him on for one sec. We okay. I have to wrap this up, but. Hey. Hey, I love you. <laughs> we, she says she loves you. We love you so much. And Adam, <gasps> oh my God, I love Adam Carroll so much. Yep. But we love you more. Th- and I'm I think glad that's that correct. Letting you talk more. Yeah. I think he's finally talked out. So, Alan, I have a question for you, though. I I have to make this fast because we got to move on. But here's my question. I'm pretty sure you told us in the email that you had gone through with the hall pass. I I was about to, but I started noticing that she wasn't really serious about the hall pass. Uh huh. And it was more of a test, so I I told the girl that I wasn't I couldn't do it. At, so I, and you wrote the did you like we were about to do it and then you sent us an email and then you told her no. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, that works. I just I just I just didn't want to. I didn't want to break her heart because it would have broken my girlfriend's heart. Aww. And I'm like, dude, no, nah, I don't want to do this to her. Yeah, she dude. Too much to me. That's so sweet, Alan. Did you yeah. now this over 500 figure? Did you actually count the whole time? Yeah, I know every single name of every single girl that I've been with, except for 19, because I never got their name. We just <laughs> we just met, hung out, and we fucked. Do you that mean was, was 19 of them you don't know, or number 19? Uh, 19 girls that I don't remember. Mm. And uh, But you can name all the rest? Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is, I started when I was 21. I lost my virginity, and I was with that girl for three years. And after that, I, I slept with hundreds. Like, I slept, in, a, in a 24-hour period, I slept with eight different women. And that's, <sighs> that's bad. And I think I think that Dr. Drew would, would classify me as a sex addict. Yeah. How old are you now? Uh, how old am I now? I'm yeah. 43. 43? I, I turned 43 on September 6th. Happy birthday. That's a, yeah, that's Thank just so a lot. Like, it, I mean, I was going to ask, is sex even fun or interesting anymore? But I feel like I, that's not the right question for, to ask. For, for me, sex became mechanical. It's just a, a mechanical way to satisfy a need that my body uh, needed to get out of. I just needed to, to just, I needed to come. And, and that's what it became about. It had nothing to do with, with love at all. Were you masturbating as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> What'd she say? Liz wants you to be her new best friend. Oh, all right. We are. I, I feel like we're we're all best friends now. Um, we're all best friends now, she said. Yeah. Except I'm going to have to go. So. Okay, no, I understand. But um, enjoy the tang. Both kinds. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Sadie. Thank you for calling me. Um, thank you for answering and talking to us. Okay, bye. I feel weird, Gary. How do you feel? <laughs> you can answer, honestly. I, I don't know the answer, honestly. You don't know how you feel? No. I know. I feel like I need to process this. See, I just, I, you, like, it's, there's just so much going on. It's not lampoonable because there's so much poignant stuff at work, and yet I feel creeped out still. But they were so nice. They were nice. They were nice. They were really nice. I and they seemed like fans, big fans. Which I know. Is always nice. I know. I shouldn't even start to poke fun. All right, Gary. Here's a question for you. At what number would you begin judging your male friend? If your male friend's like, "Oh yeah, I have slept with X amount of women," would you be like, "That's too much"? I. I don't even know what. I don't know, but it wouldn't. It would be well before they got to triple digits. Yeah, right? Okay. Because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like 100 to me is like, what? Yeah, no, it would be before that. I don't, I don't know where, but once, once you get even in the vicinity of triple digits, that's what the hell's going on, man. Yeah, I agree. You got to do some work on yourself. I kind of, should we do just another quick, no, maybe, I don't know, is it too much calls? What should we do? Should we do another quick one? No, we should, all right. <sighs> Gary is no fun anymore. All right. I need to tell you guys about our good friends over at Vistaprint. Vistaprint is a place to go for any sort of customizable marketing, logo, promotional stuff for your business or for you or for your brand because your brand is you. Um, And right now, well, actually all the time, but right now what I want to tell you guys about are the calendars that Vistaprint uh, can make for you. They're awesome. It's a constant reminder of your business. You can pre-mark dates when your business is having a special offer. You can add coupons and reminders to order products by a certain date. Everyone needs a calendar. I've talked about this before. Uh, Yes, we all have phones and iPad minis and iPad maxis and computers and um, digital watches that tell you the date, but that's not as good as having a calendar that you can look at on your wall that has pictures of puppies, if you're me. Uh, and you can put your business name and your lo- and logo on a calendar for your customers. If, if I patronized a business and they offered me a calendar that was cool looking, I would love that. I'm tired of having to go out and buy my own calendars. More people need to make promotional calendars. All calendars including – so right now there's, a, there's a uh, special offer at Vistaprint. All calendars including wall, desk, poster, wall, and folded are 50% off. And you get free shipping on your entire order if you spend more than $30. Go to www.vistaprint.com slash bestfriend to get this incredible offer. Once again, that's www.vistaprint.com slash bestfriend. Satisfaction guaranteed. If you're not happy, they will make it right. No risk. Um, in case you're wondering, I am the best at these live reads. Uh, All right, so here is part two of the Harris Whittles episode. Congratulations, you remembered to download it on Thursday if that's the day that you're listening to this. And um, I need to say something, which is there's a discussion about fish in this, uh, this, this part two, and there is an addendum to it involving a couple emails, which I don't have with me because, as as I mentioned before, I feel too sick to go find them. Um, But... Uh, but but maybe next week I'll fill you guys in. So there's a little bit of a cliffhanger, but it's a very small cliffhanger. It's like, what's a small cliff? What is a small cliff? There's like a little fisher hanger. That's right. Um, okay, here we go. I love you guys. Allison Rosen Allison Rosen is your new best friend Allison, Allison There are certain people yeah. where a new drug or a new whatever, suddenly it becomes very much all about like that thing shines brighter than anything else. And yes. maybe it's still contained. Maybe you're still only doing it at night or on the weekends or when you go out. But 
suddenly like there's just it, I have other things in my life that I things. love more than that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I care, you know, I have friends and family and a job that I like and that will always be like more know, brighter to, to me, I guess. Yeah. Then that's that's um that's very healthy. <laughs> I would I love decided. to be the poster child for responsible recreational drug use. We'll make a poster. Okay. Susan three one three. What's that? Susan three one three was a pilot that Sarah Silverman and Dan Sterling and John Schrader wrote last year, and that she cast me to star in. And it was amazing, and I'm thankful that she did. I still had to audition, of course. That's mm-hmm. how it goes. The character was named Harris Whittles. <laughs> so the other someone else might have played Almost, Harris Whittles? Most of my friends auditioned for that. That's funny. Uh, I still had to test for it against two other people and finally got it. But that was like the worst three weeks of my life is like knowing that I might not get the part of Harris Whittles. Do you know who else was close to it? Yeah. I don't – I mean that's really? shitty to talk about okay. people that yeah. didn't get something. But, uh, but to play you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I never know what's appropriate to talk about because well, I... everything is when you're right here on my show. <laughs> <laughs> everything is on the table. It wasn't. It's yeah, whatever. It was. I do know who, and I'll tell you that also. That's not as interesting. But, you're right. It's not. Yeah. And also here, I'm. This is. Um, it's from your Wikipedia page, but it I, I was like, oh, wow. So you are known for recurring segment Harris's Foam Corner. Is that right? Or is this Wikipedia getting things wrong? Well, that's on – do you Comedy know Bang Scott Bang. Ackerman? Yeah. Well, I know, I know who he is. Yeah. So I do a, a segment on his show where I – when I was doing stand-up, I would punch all my jokes into my phone and mm-hmm. the ones that – were too bad to do on stage. I would go on his show, right, and read them off my phone, and he would uh, just make fun of me for them. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of this recurring yeah. thing that we do. Well, I love that because I have a segment that I haven't done in a while, um, but that I used to do called deleted tweets, mm-hmm. where I would have people share tweets that they like things they thought of tweeting but decided not to. Right, but it's hard. The- I love that idea. That's great. Most of mine, the ones that I didn't share. Uh, involve farts or things that I thought were funny but like it's just too gross. <laughs> I don't have that problem so much anymore. But the problem with that though is that oftentimes people don't save the things they thought of tweeting. You yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. the regulars who, who would come on the show this is when I had the show in New York um, they knew to save them you know but mm-hmm. it was hard to get them. But And then also you do Analyze Fish with Scott Ackerman. With Scott, right? Which is also another thing where he just makes fun of me. Uh, yeah. But that's where we have like a big brother, little brother relationship kind of. So that's where I try to get him to like the band Fish because he mm-hmm. hates them. Yeah. And then it culminated in him actually coming to New York and seeing a show with me last New Year's. And he actually had a good time. But he still doesn't like the band. Mm-hmm. But you love them. Love them. On... They're my favorite thing on the planet. Really? Yeah. It might interest you to know or mm-hmm. it might not. Um, my brother went to UVM. And oh, yeah? he – there was a time where I think – the singer left the band, and my brother was in a band with them. They were called Dangerous Grapes. Wait, the singer? I think that either it was before Trey joined or he like Trey, left. Well, when they were at UVM, Trey – I don't know. Maybe it was a side project. Or maybe another guy. There was a guy named Jeff Holdsworth who left the band. Could have been him. No, I, th- I think it was before they were Fish. Oh, well, so when- this was in like 80 80- – Two? Yeah. Could he, it have been then? Yeah, because he they he I say they because my brothers are twins. Um they graduated high school in eighty one. Oh, so, so yeah, yeah it could have been his very freshman year at UVM. Could have, that's insane. Yeah. So when did so Fish formed, what did you say, eighty two? Fish formed in like eighty two, yeah. Yeah. Eighty three. Right. Okay. So maybe it was the three Yeah, yeah. Three but I feel I thought it So you're saying your brother was in a band with Trey? No. With oh. the other guys. Trey's the singer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was he was the singer. He of, was the singer of a band that had three fourths of fish. But I think that he, there with was Mike Page and Fish. Yes. Interesting. I've never well, heard wait, of this band. Maybe no, I know. It was it was I would love to talk to your brother All or right. if you can text him and let and ask him what the happened. deal with that. I'm so okay. curious. Um 
wait, but would they have been not if it was Mike Fishman? No, I really think it was when Trey was. Could they have known Trey, but then decided like not to get in a band with him, and then decide to get in a band with him? Yeah, they made. Yes, this actually could have been the case because Paige was going. Paige and I think Mike were going to UVM first, mm-hmm. and Trey was at Bennington, like a little hippie college. Yeah. And then Paige got two hundred bucks by getting Trey to come over to UVM. If if you, oh no, I'm wrong. Switch those. Trey went from UVM to Bennington. Bennington. Well, I'll find out for you. Yeah. At Trey was kicked out of Vermont. Oh, why? For he did a really weird thing with a cow's heart. And uh, he he uh, do tell. They, he went to the biology lab and got like a hand and a heart from a cow, and he mailed it. This a is, hand this and is a apparently heart from what cow? I what the rumor is. A hand, a human hand, and apparently he. <laughs> I don't now that they I'm saying it. It sounds hand crazy in the lab. It's, this all sounds maybe it was a fake hand and a real heart. You know, okay. like a prop hand. But sure. He mailed it to his friend that said, "I got to hand it to you. You've got you've really got heart." Wow. And apparently he got in a lot of trouble for that. I don't know if that's Doesn't true. That, it's like such a Nine Inch Nails kind of stunt, <laughs> not know. a fish stunt. They're weird. I mean, they have like six senses of humor. They yeah. are, they're not like granola hippies. Right. Yeah. So it must bother you that they're seen that way. I don't know because it leaves more room for me at their shows if people judge them and don't go see them. How many times have you seen them? Like almost 80 now, I think. How can they be your favorite thing? I love nothing more. Not even your girlfriend. Well, she's up there. How'd you meet her? Outside of a, a TV premiere event here in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I was outside smoking. She was smoking with friends that we had that were mutual. I told her about a joke on Twitter, or I told the group about a joke that I tried to write. Actually, this carries back to a, a joke on Twitter that failed about like, I suck tits for crack or something, (laughs) and then no one laughed, and she laughed, and then she said titties or something, and I was like, oh, okay, we, you know, and then... (laughs) So romantic. It was, and then uh, she, like, Facebooked me that night. I was like, I I wonder if she has a boyfriend, and she creeped on me, Mm -hmm. and I was like, it's on, and then we hung out the next night, and then it's just been on. And you guys live together? We're nearing there. She's at my house like every night. Right. It's getting to the point where she, we probably will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I I can't decide if we should do fan phone call, the new segment, or if we should do just me or everyone. Gary, what's it going to be? I like me or everyone. He told okay. me what that Let's was. Let's do that. That sounds fun. Sometimes I ponder on something I have thought or done. Is it just me or everyone? All right. Jesmond says, I overfill my self-serve coffee so a bit spits out when I put the lid on every fucking time. Uh, I don't do that. I'm careful not to do that. In fact, oftentimes I will fill it um, like three quarters of the way specifically so I don't spill coffee. Yeah. You guys? You fucking idiot. Yeah. This guy's weird. I, when I, even when I order non-self-serve coffee, it's with a little room at the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do room for milk too. Yeah. yeah. But I, I understand if you want the most coffee and don't understand surface tension. Anyway. Right. Or fond of burning yourself. Yeah. Right. Surface tension. Good yeah. reference. Yeah. Um, Tyler Keen. If a banana has started going bad but still edible, I won't eat the dark spots. Is it just me? I will eat the dark spots usually because I don't feel like cutting them out, I guess. Oh, I fucking won't. I even got a Jamba Juice yesterday, and there was a chunk of a dark spot of a banana, and I threw the whole banana thing. Banana grossed me out. Oh, really? Gary? I, yeah, I don't like the brown parts What of the is it, the taste or the texture or the, the feeling visual. that you're – I think the visual and the, the texture. Visual. It's yeah. a little softer and dead. It feels dead. Hmm. All right. Would you rather eat a banana that's a little – Past its prime mm. or a little not yet ripe, a little unripe. Because I, I have no time for unripe bananas. A little unripe? Yeah. Yeah, I would eat, I would eat that one. Yeah. Me too. Um, but, very but it's, unripe. It's weird. Be, uh, <laughs> no. Like all green? No. Yeah, no. No. That's, uh, that's like a fetal banana. But I will confess that my favorite cookie in the world is banana-based, and they have to be all brown before they can be made. What cookie is that? Uh, it's 
um, it's banana, uh, oats, and uh, chocolate chips and cinnamon. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. It's real. Who long. makes that? Like your mom, mom or something? Yeah. I don't know where the recipe came from. I think from one of my grandmothers. Yeah. But it has to be chocolate old chips. bananas. Yeah, I don't know why. So it's like I've an oatmeal asked cookie why, but... with chocolate chips and bananas, basically? Yeah. That okay. sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, it does sound good. Yeah, I've never asked why, but every time I, if, like, if I ever request them, which I don't do anymore, but when I was a kid, it was like, okay, in five days. Because she would have to go to the store, buy bananas, mm-hmm. and let them sit there. And, and it wasn't she, – she's done it recently, so it wasn't a method to get me to not eat cookies. That's just the way it has to be. <laughs> you know what? That taught you how to delay gratification, Gary. Yes, it did. It's character-building cookie <laughs> exercise. The poozer. I can never find the perfect interval for my windshield wipers. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. I, in Love general, that. have problems all the time with my windshield wipers because right now they, they leave streaks mm-hmm. and – um, now they're just leaving put- – like they're not really working is what they're doing. They're just frustrating me. I think it's time for new blades. I wanted to mention this to you after you brought this up recently on another show. If you go to Pep Boys and buy blades, I'll put them on for you. Thanks. Because you do – like it's been raining a lot. If your yeah. windshield wipers aren't working, that's not good. I know. Thank you, You think you, it's Gary. a blade problem. Thank you, Mom. I think it probably is, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And what else could it so be? I feel like blades are like – too weak sometimes. Yeah, is I that don't. The blade this is what I don't the, like. The Shh, power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the sound of the blade. That's not. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you. Um, well, I'm sorry. What were you saying though about the <laughs> blade? I don't know. I I I completely empathize with Poozer and you yeah. on this. I today it was raining, and on the way I was turning them off and on, off and on the whole time, and then I thought I can barely see. I should turn them on, and then mm-hmm. it's that. Problem. Again. And then, do you uh, sometimes after it stops raining, they're still on? Yes. And you, you forget that it's not raining anymore? Yes. I'll go a whole fucking day with that mm-hmm. where there's just. We've had, we've had, we get a lot of windshield wiper just mirror everyone's. And someone wrote in and said that they'll realize they've left their. Oh. I, maybe. Okay. What I was going to say is they said they think they realize they've left their windshield wipers on and then they'll feel like their parents and like feel stupid. Maybe it's that they realize they left their turn signal on. Mm. I was wrong. I missed probably a turn signal. Pardon me. I get signal. so angry at people that do that. And then you're the person that he was worried about yeah. offending. But then you do it yourself and you go, yeah. oh, and now I get how that person right. did it. Hoist on my own petard. Right. Ethan Chapman. Apparently people lean over, but I stand up to wipe my butt. Just me or everyone. Okay. That, that's psychotic. Ethan is psychotic. Sometimes I'll do it. Sometimes I do it. <laughs> I listen. Sometimes I do it. I don't really know why. I just get I maybe I get tired of sitting or it's I feel like you can like, get a kind of a different angle. That's cleaner for you. You're a girl. Yeah. I think girls have cleaner shits than guys. You can't have whatever's happening. You mean cuz they just can't be as gross and dirty as yours? Yeah, there's just no what way. What percentage of your shits are like Oh my God! I'm gonna be wiping for hours, or I gotta take a shower. Right, right. Or no one wipe. to hold them, no one to walk away, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 There's it's I listen. I have a terrible diet. Right. I, well, you're avoiding I, the brown bananas. Yeah, but I just eat like I don't know what I'm putting in my body. It's not vegetables often. I don't know what's happening. I never know what's gonna happen. It's a crapshoot, literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you, I'd say I get into some real dangerous territory, like once every <laughs> five times. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would have to know the frequency with which you're going to know whether that's a a bad <laughs> ratio. Well, you go once a day. Who doesn't go once a day? Some people. Not everyone goes once a day. That's unhealthy. You should go once a day. Some people go more than once a day. Oh. I imagine. That becomes unhealthy, it feels like. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You Wait, you guys are like clock, clockwork just once a day? Yeah, pretty much. Same time every day? I, if I can help it. 420. That's good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. J16, is it just me? I love guessing what time it is when I wake up on days off before looking at the clock. That's just you. I don't do that. But it seems like something I would do because I like to find all, little games around everything, yeah. especially numbers. But I don't do that one. I do it. I love it. And I'm pretty good at it. Really? Mm-hmm. I do like to – like um, if I go somewhere with someone, 
like shopping or something, and I hate shopping, but this is just an example of somewhere where we're sort of away from staring at a clock, Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, what time do you think it is? Great. I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. That's tons of fun. Do you think you have a good internal clock? Uh, It's kind of – it's just okay. Mm. It's not great. Mm. Are you – well, yeah, you were late today. Yeah, I was. (laughs) Um, Nah, but that wasn't – Between your shitty clock internally and your windshield wipers, I'm surprised you got here when you did. You so. know, I'm not usually <laughs> super late. You were two minutes late. I'm, I'm, I'm usually I'm usually I'm earlier, your though. Balls. I know. I'm just, I just want the listeners to know. Okay. I don't know why I do. I just <laughs> enjoy sharing things about myself. Is she usually on time? Should I be honest? Yeah, you can be honest. She's been in a downward slide lately. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. <laughs> but That's what I'm saying. It started. Time, what's going on with you? Know you? What? The shows, Are you on drugs? No, the shows have been earlier and earlier. That's what's been happening. I'm sorry, but 4 p.m. is not justification for being late. <laughs> yeah. Today's show was at 2 p.m. This was 2. You should I mean, make I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not criticizing you, and you're never more than like two minutes late. Yeah. But there was a time where you were showing up an half hour, an hour half hour, 45 minutes early. I know. And now it's more like uh, you're cutting it within five minutes. I don't want to turn into Adam. And, and that's fine. It's not, it's not a problem. He's late. But you're not allowed to use He's the. He's exactly on time. Oh. You're not allowed to use the, the shows are getting later and later excuse when it's a 4 p.m. or a 2 p.m. show, I don't think. All right, but That's I also don't have balls. I don't have a problem with you showing up late. Listen, Just this saying. was an important conversation to have on the air. Yeah, I know. You know now. See, Gary, I almost called you on my way in to tell you I was going to be two minutes late, <laughs> and also to go over those things that I wanted to talk about when we got here. But you know what stopped me? Aside from my hatred of the phone. It specifically was, I don't want, like, that. that's a real Adam move, because Adam is always, like, Thank you. he'll be there at 59. If I, I don't normally refer to time that way, but apparently I do right now. I, be love, there at, I get what you mean. Yeah, 59, yeah. and he calls on his way in. Mm-hmm. And I did. I felt like it was just real, like, Animal Farm. Well, I appreciate it. If I were it. to be, be like, now I'm the boss, <laughs> you know? I appreciate it, but don't, don't, let, that ha- don't let that fear okay. uh, dissuade you again, because... At least for me, the beef with Adam calling in on the way is that Adam calls in and is requesting things to be done that could have been right. – that he could have told me to yeah. do three hours ago. With you, it was like you just wanted to go over things that needed to be verbally discussed in person. Right. Or, right. or just verbally discussed rather. It didn't yeah. have to be in person. So right. if you ever want to call me on the way in again, that's fine. Feel free. But uh, it was fine. Me and Harris just hung out and we're talking fantasy football for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Cornelius Perry. I read books while I'm going to the bathroom, but they are cookbooks. Who? No. I, I, well, you know what, though? If I'm like, uh, the, t- I think it would ruin some I dishes could imagine. For me. See, I, I think I could do it. Like, there, this is, here's, this is disgusting. There okay. was a time where, <laughs> where if I was snacking on something, I wouldn't have been able to go to the bathroom at the same time. Now, it's not as if I would bring a snack into you the can, bathroom. Uh-huh. But let's say I still had like a bite of something in my mouth. That you wouldn't stop me. You can go into the me. bathroom yeah. and start. I did, I, but it used to be like hell no. There when used you to be go a real to a great uh, divide. Do you drink? Um, very rarely. Oh, but okay. I used to drink a lot. Well, if you go to a bar, can you bring a drink into the bathroom? Oh, yeah. I, I can't do that. Really? Well, where do you put it? I, I either have to finish it or I leave it with a friend. I can't bring an, a drink into a place where there's those particles floating around. Yeah. And getting into my drink. Right. Yeah, I made peace with that a long time ago. But I remember um, when I worked at – I worked at Time Out in New York when I lived in New York. Mm-hmm. And people would always stand in line for the bathroom holding a drink and then they'd go in with it. And I thought, that's weird. Yeah. Because I would feel Im- like I'm just going to enjoy my Diet Coke in the bathroom. I would feel weird about it. I Yeah, you're right yeah. to feel weird. Okay. Dinsmore 16. Is it just me or everyone? When I'm in a semi-empty parking lot after dark, all I can think of is the famous Back to the Future scene. It's not me. It's not me. Nope. Right. Max the Guru. I wake up five minutes before my alarm is supposed to go off and I still opt to stay in bed until it rings. Absolutely. Yes. I can wake up and I have to pee so bad, but I will not I will not squander those five extra minutes. I will suffer. Absolutely. My whole day so is thrown off and I'm like, oh, I could have gotten those extra five yeah. minutes. I don't feel like myself for the rest of the day. Yeah. Now, do you do the thing where you press snooze a whole lot? Because oh, yeah, I yeah, do yeah, that yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I started to do the thing where I just press snooze into – I'm just 30 minutes late to work now. It's gotten out of hand. I'll mm. just snooze for an for hours. 
But will you do it? Will you get your extra hour of sleep in nine minute increments? Because that's what yes. I do. It's yeah, it's horrible. It's it is awful. Um, but. Now, I worried a little bit when I moved in with my boyfriend that it's going to be a problem because we both do that. And if there's one thing I don't want, it's to wake up every nine minutes while he presses snooze for an hour. When mm-hmm. he, but each of us have only done it like once. So. That's good. Yeah. We're both late You're to everything. You're a good but... match. Thank you. You too. Um, a good sleep match. Sleep matching is important. Mm, yeah. Well, I wouldn't. Okay. He snores. I snore. Well, you guys would be a good match then. <laughs> How does your girlfriend feel about this? She is fine with it and loves it. You sure? Well, we're still nascent in our relationship. Right. And you're both on drugs probably, so <laughs> it makes it easier. She says it's like a baby bear. Oh, I'm going to try to look at it that way because that is awfully cute. <laughs> All right, Bryant Rich. If I grab something out of the dishwasher and then realize it's not what I wanted, I put it back instead of putting it away. Um... God, I'm pretty sure I do that. I will um, I will unload a dishwasher part way and then I'll leave the rest for later. And I think yeah. – and then I actually have the thought, this is why I'm not an effective human being. Like I feel intense amounts of sh- – lately I've been feeling a lot of shame over my inability to like just do something. Because mm-hmm. I like just do a tiny bit and then don't go all the way. Like I will clean the shower but not all the way. Sure. I don't know why I do that. You know why? Because I don't want to bend over and get in there and do stuff with – like I, we have, I swept the stairs. There's still dust in the corners. Right. You'll never get that. Yeah. Do you fill your car tank up all the way? That I do because if there's one thing I hate, it's going to the gas station. So I hate right, it. Right. So spend an extra 10 seconds instead of yes. going twice. Yes. Yeah. But, but I don't – we have one of those Keurig coffee machines where you fill the water yeah, likewise. thing. likewise. I, Water just sits in mine for ages. Oh, see, I won't fill it up all the way because it. We have a so we have a refrigerator that has one of those things where you push it and the water comes out uh-huh. on the door, uh-huh. and the water comes out really slowly. Mm-hmm. And so I just don't want to stand there forever. I mean, so you just literally forever, right? Yeah. So I just fill it up enough so that my boyfriend won't be like, "Why is it blinking?" <laughs> right, right. So he has to fill it. Yeah. So he has to build – he's building these lamps. He's building a lamp. He's filling the water. Filling the, the water. Machines. He definitely takes the trash out more Taking frequently the trash than I out. do. What, what do you contribute? Do you cook? Um, you know what? I put his dinner in the microwave for him yesterday. Okay. I, sta- I got it started. Oh, and I lifted – I peeled the film back. Are you nurturing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're very nurturing. I like to think I am. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't cook very much. Yeah, but just but like, in terms of right. uh, you'll hold his head into your bosom and pat it and say, "How was your day, Bubby?" I wipe his butt for him. Sometimes. That's lovely. Standing yeah. up, standing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't. I don't detail his ass while standing. <laughs> that, I feel like that suggests something else entirely. Yeah. Oh, you I got to detail that ass. Yeah, I, I have. Keep your man, ladies. Detail that ass. <laughs> I have it just me or everyone. Uh, <laughs> Which is, I don't wake up in a great mood. Is yeah. that just me or Morning everyone? people are fucking psychopaths. Okay. I hate them. I don't, I'm trying to think if I know any hate. true It's not, it's not everyone or just you. This is one of those 50-50s, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think all three of us are on the same page that fuck those people. But, like, mm-hmm. one of my best friends, like, is up at five every morning. Yeah. And, like, fucking ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't if he doesn't it. have anything to do, he'll just, like he'll just go to the beach and just sit there. Some people like, just don't need a lot of sleep. Does What time does he go to sleep? He goes to sleep. To your question. Like 10 or 11. But, like, he's he's not getting nine hours of sleep. It's not like he's you right. know, crashing out at nine. Right. He's just – he gets – you know, he goes to sleep earlier than almost everyone else I know. But even if he goes to sleep at 2, he's up at, like, 6.30 and he's like, ugh, fucking wasted two – wasted hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, The times dude. that I have gotten up that early and it's all quiet and peaceful, I do like it, but not enough to actually It's great if you don't have do to it. actually start your day. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. I would like to get up at four and just have me time. Yeah. And then go back to sleep. Exactly. Because <laughs> the morning can be nice and peaceful. Yes. But if you have to fucking go to work. Right. Mm-hmm. It is weird on days where, like I've had jobs, um... You know, where I have to be there really super early and then you look at your watch and it's like 9.30 a.m. and you've been doing a whole bunch of stuff all day. And it, that is a weird feeling to me to be thinking most yeah. people are just getting That's going right feeling. now. Yeah. Yeah. 
But it's usually a tired feeling, though, for me. Yeah. So that's, okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's play our closing Just Me or Everyone song, which I love. So I did um, my show live at LA Podcast Festival with uh, Greg Proops and Doug Benson. And that episode is a premium bonus content episode uh, for sale in the iTunes store for uh, $1.99 now. But anyway... Um, they uh, lampooned this segment quite a bit. I'm surprised it still exists. They mm-hmm. um, they beat it within an inch of its life. But it's <laughs> entertaining. But anyway, Greg Proop, they were dismayed with the lack of closing songs, so they invented their own. And Greg Proop sang a little song at the end of Just Me or Everyone. Here's an excerpt from the song. Is it me? Is it everyone that has neurotic compulsions that compel them to tweet in the middle of the night when no one else is asleep? And yet I feel that Allison can totally relate to these neurotic fucking musings of mine. It's an endless song that starts again right now. Is it me or is it everyone? It's <laughs> so good. It's, it didn't even feel like you made it up now. I believe that it Thank exists. You. There's pudding and it scares me. <laughs> there's lights and they're afraid. There's a chicken on my stoop and there's a robin in the yard and there's a fucking thing that happened the other day when I was in my car. <laughs> Maybe we should just cut it down to the pudding and chicken part, but then we lose much of the melody. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah. So are you still in a band? Were mm-hmm. you in a band? Yeah, I'm in a band. What's your band? Don't Stop or We'll Die. Mm-hmm. And what do you guys sound like? Mm, it's kind of like Ben Foldsy a little bit. Do you play a lot? It's three-piece. Around a lot? We used to, but during uh, one of us writes for Rest Development, and I write at part. Like, we all have weird hours, mm-hmm. and so it's hard. But we love it. We have two albums out. Go on iTunes, guys. Yeah. Yeah, guys. <laughs> I used to play drums. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, where do you keep your drums? In my house. Really? I have a the... music room. Oh. Yeah. With all the with the foam and the acoustic yeah, yeah. whatnots yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I went all out because I love it. And I want to be able to play it two in the morning if I want. Yes. That, okay, that'll be my goal. That's something I can work towards someday. To have enough everything that I could have that. I've been saying we should get a drum set in this studio because mm-hmm. there's tons of space. There's a lot of space. But I don't know if we're ever going to do it. That'd I be still great. think we should, though. Um, it's in a good area for that. You mm-hmm. would never get a complaint, ever. I know. Yeah. What, Gary? I've always thought that that was a joke. You're, you're serious about that? Oh, yeah. I'm totally serious. You want to get a drum set yeah. for a fucking recording studio? <laughs> Are you well, crazy? Well, you put it that way, it doesn't make sense. There's plenty of time that we're not recording. That we're here? Yeah. Well, not all of it. I mean, it doesn't have to be a communal activity, although it would be fun if we each just hit one drum. Not really. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, late at night when everyone literally... leaves, if I were to go play drums or something, who, who would... You could make uh, this a recording drum. studio. That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah. For bands. We could. I don't great. think we want to be around bands. That's true. But, you know. Yeah, I feel... Because, like, Chris will play his guitar late at night or something. I'm just saying there's plenty of time that there's not everyone here. That's true. Thank you. Okay. Um... God, now I can't decide... My new thing is being indecisive on the air. I used to try to keep that you? in my... No, that's cool. No. I think that's honest. I think – I feel like I've always been indecisive, but usually I try to be a little more decisive on air, Gary. Do you disagree? You can disagree. It's okay. You can disagree. No, I don't know. You could be right. So well, now, what are you deciding I'm, between? Now I'm deciding between the segment, Hey, Go Fuck Yourself, hearing Gary's Joanne's Fabrics <laughs> story, or fan phone call. I'm going to rule out fan phone call because um, – just because it's – I just feel like it's not going to happen on this show. Um, but <laughs> But you guys – we're bringing back the fan phone call segment. So if you want us to call you, it could happen anytime, by the way. Uh, send, email your phone number, and we won't do anything weird with it, to A-R-I-Y-N-B-F at AdamCrolla.com. And that's Allison Rosen is your new best friend. Again, we probably won't do anything weird with your phone number except maybe call you on it. And if you have a landline, that would be preferable. Yeah, send that number. Um, yeah, so should we do uh, – let's just do Hey, Go Fuck Yourself. Hey, hey. Go fuck yourself. Okay, I need to find the um, comment I want to respond to. Do you know about this segment, Harris? Yeah, Gary told me a little bit. Do you have now? Do you have anything that you want to um, contribute? No pressure if you don't. Um. No, I've gotten a lot of hateful comments on 
Twitter, I guess, but nothing specific. Mm-hmm. Do does it hate- bother you? Uh, yes, it does. I've gotten into big fights with, um, like, teenage girls on the Oh No They Didn't live journal blog. I don't even know what Oh No They Didn't is. I, I like, wrote a joke about Coney when it was happening. And oh, no, They leaked a didn't. story that was like, Parks and Rec writer is racist. And then I was like, I'm not fucking racist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, now I know what Oh No You Didn't yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, I think Gary had a question. Uh, yeah, do you get hate on Twitter... As as twiddles or on humble brag or oh, both? both both plenty. What, are, what plenty. are people hating on humble brag for? Uh, well, we understand why they're hating on you, but why well, humble brag? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, a lot of people don't. Uh, well, actually, a lot of people that I humble brag, it, they end up getting hate tweets, and I feel bad for that mm. more so. Like, yeah, when I humble brag a girl and then everyone's like you cunt and I'm like take it easy this yeah. is just like a fun thing you don't have to be that harsh but then for me I get a lot of people that are like that's not a humble brag you're wrong and I'm like I I, I know what you don't know what it is yeah I, you I define it, it so yeah fuck you, man sometimes people will accuse me of humble brag bragging and it's like no I I'm <clears throat> bragging <laughs> that's what I do that the way that I I think conceal my thing is just to go over the top with it right it's still the same false hey, I, thing I, I but like at least more. i'm yeah at least i'm sort of not um like what i don't like and actually julia allison you know she's in your book right she she used to do this all the time <laughs> um and I, I know her so i feel bad saying this but not that bad she would always post a photo of her and someone famous and just be like i'm with so and so um, you know, how is she so beautiful? Or like just these huge glowing comments about right. the other person. Right. She's uh, like super into humble brag, I will say. Yeah, she's and perhaps it's right. because I used to retweet her a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's her way of of saving face. Or oh, something. she's super into the book and you mean she thinks it's funny. she used to be just into humble bragging and then the Twitter account she got super into and would always write and ask for interviews and and such. Ask for interview, like oh, like she would want to interview you. Yeah. For what? I don't know. Did you ever do it? No. Okay, that explains why you don't know what it was for then. <laughs> Interesting. But I but uh yeah, I think it's like one of those things where you join. She felt like picked on or something. Yeah. And you join the side of that. Right. And then right. Which is right. That's the best. I love that. You know, instead of her being mean about it, she was like, yeah, I can't it. believe it's – I hate humble brags too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. Anyway, here, here's um, – this came in on my uh, iTunes comment feed for the podcast. Um, wow. This is a first, right? For me to take – yeah, I think it might be actually for me to take it from here. It actually really – it um, – it, uh, Not that I'm going to give them the power, so it didn't really bother me. I'm just going to read it anyway. Uh, Listen closely. I did, and I'm done with dot, 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 because I'm reading on my phone, so who knows what it actually said. One star. I've listened to several Allison Rosen is your new best friend podcasts, and I just can't do it anymore. On the podcast, Allison reads nice comments about herself that she begged people to write, which is unfunny and self-centered. Allison tells those that criticize her or don't think she is funny to go F themselves and has told producer Gary on air that those who quote that those people quote just don't understand my sense of humor. I don't think I've ever said that. Well, first of all, there's that's just. False. You don't read comments that people have written to you. That's right. You read I them. Do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, which is so. Uh, his whole producer Gary on air that those people just don't understand my sense of humor, which is insulting to her audience. It doesn't appear that she does much much research on her guests based on her questions. That's just patently false. Uh, she interrupts people frequently and consistently steps on other people's jokes. She can also be mean and hurtful to people. When Elizabeth Lame was on Allison Rosen is your best friend, Allison made a joke about Elizabeth's dead cat, which died just a few days prior to the podcast. You could almost feel Elizabeth's sadness about Allison's comment. On Miss Movie's podcast, Allison broke the news of Miss Movie's pregnancy to her listeners rather than letting M.M. do it herself. Um, okay. Oh, listen, moron. I appreciate that you're following me around the internet, but Miss Movies was, I think, like eight months pregnant, and she could have edited it out. I don't remember what I said, but she could have edited it out 
Go fuck yourself. Uh, when Jesse Thorne was on the show, Allison asked about his baby. And when he answered, she criticized Jesse for being, quote, that guy that always talks about his baby, making Jesse defensive. I originally had a feeling Allison was not a nice person in November of 2011. <laughs> This, it's crazy. Uh, when she stated on the Adam Carolla podcast that she felt sorry for Coach Jerry Sandusky when he was arrested, I believe her reason was something about hey, him being. Hey, hey, go fuck yourself. I I'm sorry, I'm done. That, I know that my response want, should be thank you for listening, go fuck yourself. But anyway, uh, I believe her reason was something about him being a human being, too, and him looking sad. Adam's podcast is also becoming increasingly difficult to listen to because of Allison. I wanted to like Allison Rosen as your best friend. Really? But given all I have heard of Allison and the way she treats people, I have no desire to listen to her on any podcast. Wow. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's uh, that was, crazy. That was long. It's really long. It's I, I this is might be one of those like don't poke the bear things because this person obviously is kind of obsessed. Yeah, they're gonna hear this. Yeah, I know. I also think it's probably someone that you've like hurt in real life at some point. It was like too much. That was weird. Yeah. That well, the thing is, <laughs> it bothers me because obviously. And I think anyone who listens to this knows the idea that I've done all these things to hurt all these people and that I didn't know about it. Like that really gets to me because I do pride myself on being a considerate person. But every single thing he mentioned, like I was in the room and people he, have listened and yeah. that's not you, what happened. Do you remember the Elizabeth I lame do. thing? Not. I do. What did I say? It, I know that was, I did make a joke, but. You made a joke about her cat, and it turned out that it had died. It wasn't like she had oh, laid it oh, out really? there, and then okay. you made a joke. So, yeah, it was fuck innocent. That. That's insane. It was. Listen, the, I, every guest that I that think that maybe she had said it, and then I is a callback. I think. I think after, it was. A, yeah, it was like. A, okay. But the original way you found out was you were making a joke or saying something about her cat, and then she revealed oh. that it had just died. Oh yeah. So then, oh like, yeah. Thirty you could minutes hear, later, right, and you could hear the sadness. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. It was. So, it right. Every specific guest that this person referenced left here so happy and yeah. so thankful to be on like mm -hmm. you can sense if somebody's uncomfortable there have been maybe not on this show but on shows that we work on, on this network right. there have been guests who have left unhappy yeah it's not no, hard no, to tell. it's never been this show i, don't, I, don't, I can't think of no, a time it's been this either. show that's it's... my thing i've made people comfortable <laughs> <laughs> well but those specific guests have all left like glowing yes. like so happy like yeah yeah, yeah that's right that she's unhappy that person's very unhappy i think it's a probably a guy it's interesting. You think I it's think a it's she? a girl. Yeah. And the yeah, it's actually you know who dislikes me most. I've noticed a pattern. Uh, it's men. You know Gary. No, I was going to say me. Oh, it's <laughs> Gary. I've been, it's been a pattern. No, it's um, men who have just had babies. For some reason, like a lot, Weird. and I don't know what it is. I think it's that if you just had a baby. Um, you have a lot of time on the computer, maybe. Okay. I, I don't know. It's really weird because I always think, like, who is taking the time to do this? You and know then, why I thought yeah. that was a uh, – there was a lot of stuff about feelings and, and hurting people's feelings. Yeah. It seemed like, oh, guy, like okay. a guy wouldn't be so tuned in to, like, you hurt Elizabeth Lames. I don't right. Know. It seemed like girls. Right. Maybe. It seemed girly. It seemed catty. Maybe. I, I don't, don't know, know why I, w I think it's a guy offhand. It's interesting. But, I thought it was too. Yeah. As for the Sandusky thing, Jesus Christ, like that is totally misunderstanding what I had said. And I stopped saying anything along those lines because I realized that I can't articulate what I'm trying to say. All I was trying to say was initially when he was arrested, I thought you could tell that he is so deluded that he does not understand what he did was wrong, mm -hmm. it seemed to me. And there's something on a human level that is, like, tragic about that. In no way do I think that we should excuse – I think he's a monster and horrible and, yes, all of that. In no way am I trying to excuse any of it. I was just saying – Oh, I, I, like, I, I feel inherently sad that, like, for people who's – sexual proclivities like their instinct yes is happens to be something illegal right if if you know lucky i like girls and i like having sex with girls who are of age who are of age but what if your yes. true internal There's, desire right. you're trapped in your body it yeah. is it is there's Fucked something up. there's and it, like from I was an English major. If we if this is literature, if you're looking at it that way, there's something just tragic about it. But I right. can feel I've talked about this before. Like 
a problem I have is that I can feel sympathy or empathy for anyone, sure. people that I shouldn't. Like, I'm sure that I could, you know, if I met Hitler and heard of whatever, like someone can just tell me. That's a bad example. It's an obvious well, he's and supposed yet bad to, I mean, he, example. He probably would have been charming. I mean, right. he, he did pretty okay for himself. People yeah. liked him. Right. Yeah. He was stirring. He was charming. He liked art. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But just in general, it's hard for me. I don't like Sandusky or Hitler. To, I need to yes, say that now very quickly. That, yeah. And I want to say that I also <laughs> don't. So anyway, but yeah, like I said, I realize that my response to this should be thanks for listening. Like, sorry, you're a moron. But instead, it's just like, ugh. I don't enjoy the feeling of being that misunderstood. Like right. the idea. And that's just the kind of thing where like you could wave to someone and they can be like, why are you flipping me off? And it's like, oh. Like it's just – this is almost like semiotics. Right. It's like someone can interpret a gesture or a word or however they want and I don't like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so go fuck yourself. Hey, 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 go, go fuck yourself. yourself. Well, Harris Whittles, thank you so much for doing this show. Thank you for having me. This um, was great. It was fun. Wasn't it though? Mm-hmm. It's much better than you expected probably. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be horrible. Right. So it's actually not hard. To, to be, yeah, to beat that. Oh, it's good that you had your low yeah. expectations. Yes, 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 yes. Um, now, where where can everyone find you, and where should they go? And I would plug say everything. your priorities now, people, should just be going to buy the humble brag book, and then also watch Parks and Rec on Thursday at eight thirty, starting in January. And they can follow you on Twitter at on Twitter at Twiddles, Twiddles or at Humble Brag. Okay, and if you're gonna buy the book. You could buy it on – I mean – or if you're going to buy something else on Amazon, which you are because they have everything, why not click through the banner on my website, alisonrosen.com, and then that helps out the show and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And don't forget to look for the bonus episode of my show in the uh, iTunes comedy album section for $1.99. Um, and I love you guys. And um, I think that might be it for now. And I will talk to you next week. Goodbye. Hey, do you know – We had a good time, but now we gotta go. Thank you for choosing the Allison Rosen Show. Allison Rosen is your new best friend. That's right. Digital.